Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Baseball Podcast. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and today we're going to take a look at league winners. That's right, outside the top 180P, because of course the guys in the top 100 are good. We know they're going to help you win leagues, but who are some of the other contributors outside that top 100 that you want to draft to make sure you have on your roster because they might help you bring home the gold. And to help me do it, of course, is my co-host, The Welsh. You're not a guest. I decided yesterday. I don't know why I'm calling you a guest. Uh, I don't know what the hell is going on. But it is 316, which means happy Stone Cold Steve Austin Day. And in, you know, typical Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, form, what? we got a stunner yesterday uh, leading what? up until today, which is what? Which is what? Edwin Sorry. Diaz. What? Uh, oh. Unfortunately, looking uh, like he is going to be unavailable for quite some time for the New York Mets. As of recording this, we don't have clarity of what the injury is exactly. We know it's mm. a knee. We don't know how long he's going to be out. But Welsh, we, we have to speculate here. Ottavino still in that bullpen. I know they're going to watch Zach Britton throw. That's another name that's been on the radar. And Welsh, before we get to the replacements, I just want to throw this out, man. This is why when we do these mock drafts, everybody sees me wait on closer because it's the one thing that you can replace easily on the waiver wire saves or saves. You'll never replace the peripherals of a guy like Edwin Diaz. Of course he is super special, but to me, that's why I always just wait on closer because eventually there's turnover guys, lose jobs, guys get hurt, guys get traded and eventually saves comes around again. But who is going to save games for the Mets here in 2023? Because I think that is now wide open. Yeah, my only counter to that is like, that is actually one more lockdown closer off the board. And that is mm-hmm. one less that's on the table. So I would actually say this could be an argument to taking the top guy. So here I would tell you this. I don't think I ever took Edwin Diaz once. I never was the first to pull the trigger on the closers. I was a semi-reactor to them. Like, I'd love to get Class A, but what do you see in most of my drafts? I end up best at getting like Jordan Romano or Ryan mm-hmm. Presley and trying to do something like that. So, like, your point is good. I still think this is just an argument for taking closers a little bit early because what I think is going to ultimately happen, I could be wrong. We just don't know anything right now. It looked really bad what happened to Edwin. If people don't know also. It looks bad. It looks like it's going to be a while, folks. It was in a celebration. It was literally Puerto Rico winning. Or, or, uh, no, uh, yeah, no, it was Puerto Rico, right? Yeah, Puerto Mm -hmm. Rico beat uh, Dominican Republic. And it was after the game winning, and they jumped around and celebrated, and he had to be carried off because he hurt his knee. I don't think they're going to label a closer. I think you're going to get the classic by committee. And I think it's going to be both versions of Ottavino and David Robertson. Mm -hmm. I think Ottavino is the guy that I'm like making the choice for. If you looked at like roster stuff, uh, he was set up to be the eighth guy, David Robertson, the seventh. I do think they would kind of go into a committee. And that's my point. You would want closers that are locked down and not in committees. And this is now one more committee. So yes, you could easily go and pick these guys up. But now you have no assurances. Maybe they'll give us a gift and they'll say Adam Adovino is the guy and there's no question. Maybe they'll make a big trade to someone that's kind of like Mm. semi, uh, not that they would do this, but like, you know, the Mariners, Paul Seawald gets traded and all of a sudden Andres Munoz is a lockdown closer and Paul Seawald now is. I just don't anticipate it, but boy. I remember it like hurts. in the WBC, this one hurt. A lot of complaints. Look, I still love I, it, of course, by the I, way. And but. look, injuries happen in spring training. Injuries happen. Francis Golendor closed his hand in a hotel room door. I mean, like, it's just, look, these things can happen. The only thing about the WBC that I actually saw one person make a cogent comment about it, which was really these are very high level uh, games that these guys are playing where maybe their bodies just aren't physically ready for the emotion and the physicality of what these games are. And that actually is the only cogent point that I've heard where the WBC does put guys in danger. And that's right, because look, there's nobody watching these games. Doesn't think these guys are trying and giving it everything they've got. And there's every reason to believe that their bodies aren't quite up to hundred percent ramped up for the but intensity of thing. these moments. This wasn't a thing that happened in game and he blew his arm out. No, this was but it like wasn't, everybody... but it happened in celebration. And this again, Gus Ferrat all over type. Of thing. Look, it is. It just sucks. It's Kendrick yeah. Morales. Remember years ago when he hit yeah. that grand slam and he walked off and he walked off without his knee ligaments after when he stepped on home plate, when he jumped on it, like these things just happen. It sucks. Move on. There we got to go. All right. So let's continue on with our league winners. Before we do that, just a quick reminder too: next Wednesday, one o'clock Eastern. If you haven't already subscribe to our fantasy bros MLB channel, because we are going to host fantasy baseball fest, the 2023 festival of friendship. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be Welsh, myself, Eno Saris, Craig Mish, 
We've got uh, Nick Pollock, Paul Spore, and a whole host of other folks too. Chris Meany is going to join us. Frank Stample. It's a who's who of fantasy baseball, and we want you to be a part of it. So don't forget, 1 o'clock Eastern, next Wednesday, March 22nd. Be there, baby, for all of the I'll fun. I'll be a guest the whole time, Joe. I'll be a the guest whole time. for four hours, right? Well, I told you. I told you guest the other day because I still treat you nicely, whereas I'm tough on the other guys. But I'm sure by yeah. May that'll yeah. change. If I if yeah. I bring, I think there's a couple of players I might bring up today that you might start getting tough on me that you're t- okay. sick of me uh, talking well, about. Well, let's start with that. Let's start with your number ten outside the top 180p. It could be a league winner in 2023. Okay, so the league winner is very specific here, mm-hmm. and um, it doesn't always necessarily mean the players that I am obsessed with getting. But I did do this in a mock the other day at number ten. If you want to talk about real league winning. I think you have to, and I said this very early in the uh, preseason, you got to talk about Adalberto Mondesi. As gross as it all is, uh, you've got an ADP that is putting him at 234. He actually, uh, in projections, is a guy that can steal all the bases, can lead the league in stolen bases. It's at shortstop. There's a really decent potential he can move up in a lineup in Boston right now. They might have to manufacture a lot. So you want to talk about like league winning here, a guy post 200 that could lead the league in stolen bases, that can hit double digit homers that's what this this is like a definitive reason behind this so Alberto Mondesi for me is an easy idea of a league winner will he be he's probably the biggest question mark as far as my list goes but he was actually like the first person I thought of because he gets this Joe what do you have at 10 well first I just want to say it's a very risky one but again it costs you almost nothing at the ADP is at so I get it I'm not too mad I will roll my eyes a little though on the YouTube channel about Alberto Mondesi because he's already hurt He's already but dealing with injuries. Of the 20 does. players we have between you and You're I, right. I believe You're this right. is the fourth lowest ADP of any single player. It and is. there's no player of low. these 20 besides him or the other 19 that could lead the league in a category. You're right. And the rule changes help him potentially. Uh, I'm I'm rolling my eyes, but at the same time, I hear what you're saying. I would say, depending on where he hits in the lineup, I agree 100% and how much in terms of that bats the Boston Red Sox are going to give him. Yeah. All right. Next for me, Kodai Senga, 288. How in the hell is his ADP still 288? Well, I don't know. This is ridiculous. Let's get in on this guy. I keep telling everybody the Mets rotation, he's solidified as the number three guy. At the worst case scenario, he's really good for a few months. And if you still don't believe in him, you could swap him in a trade. But to me, Senga is one of these guys that goes fork ball. Everybody's been talking about it. It looks really good. Sometimes we get pitchers who come over from Japan who struggle. And sometimes we get then they come over and they dominate like the Hideo Nomos of the world to go out there and win rookie of the year. Seng is an interesting wager for that. But in terms of fantasy, I'm going to tell you right now, I think he's worth the investment because you have very little to lose at this ADP. Uh, Welsh, let's go to you for another pitcher for your number nine player. Yeah, someone I was on crazy, crazy on earlier in the year. But you know what? When you're looking at pitchers that have that like top 15, 20 upside as far as SPs goes, or, you know, even 10, I suppose, like that, you're looking at those aces. The White Sox are actually a place that you can dig. And Lance Lynn is someone that has really jumped up to mm-hmm. me. Lance Lynn's ADP right now on Fantasy Pros ADP, the consensus you guys can go check out, is 130 right now. Last year, he had an unsustainable left on base percentage of 68%. is his career. You also had uh, an over average home run to fly ball ratio, which is pretty manageable. Strikeouts were lower than they've been really since 2017. And Velo was a tiny bit dipped. All of that seems to have come back at spring stats, looked good in the WBC, looked good in spring. Lance Lynn is a great bounce back candidate who you're getting post 125. And he's got the potential to be as far as even inside the top 10 of SPs, he can stack some wins. White Sox have been underwhelming, but you get a discount on everybody named, not named Dylan Cease. And I'm all about that right now. So Lance Lynn is number nine as a league winner. Joe, number nine yeah. for you. Lance Lynn made my list as well. So more on him later to come. Uh, my number nine guy is Jordan Walker, third base eligible, but he's probably going to play the outfield for the St. Louis Cardinals. He is at 198 right now uh i i think you just need patience with jordan walker everything is there i think the opportunity will present itself and if it doesn't present itself right away in april i would not panic about drafting him at 198 still i would just keep him on my bench wait and see how april goes because i do think eventually you're going to get four good months out of jordan walker at minimum 
And I think that's worth the selection of Jordan Walker. The guy has power. They have a need for him in the middle of this order without a doubt. And I think it's high time one of these young outfield prospects of the St. Louis Cardinals finally hits. And Mm -hmm. I mean that literally and figuratively. And I think Jordan Walker is the guy to break the mold. I really do. I like what I see out of him. I compared him a lot to Jermaine Dye. He reminds me a lot of that player. And I think that this is a guy that you are going to see sooner than later impact fantasy baseball and the fact that you could still qualify him at third base in most leagues is huge welsh all leagues. that alone there's so little depth there at first and third you need corner guys you can get by in april picking some guys up off the waiver wire but walker is a better long-term 2023 investment so i want jordan walker on my team uh let's go to number eight for you uh, oh i'm letting guys that uh, i actually drafted yesterday on our show. yeah and a funny fact I want to mention to the guy you just had um, in Jordan Walker. I just had a draft yesterday, a mock draft, where he went inside the top 80. I mean, he is moving up. Whoa, also, whoa. I know. I know. It's crazy. that, And that's the assumption of him having a job. Also, I want to give you credit here for the list you put together because I didn't even see that you had Lance Lynn on it. I had to pivot so many times off of this great <laughs> list that you made because oh, half of these guys it. were on mine. No, half of these guys were on mine. Jordan Walker would have been on well, mine. We like the same then- guys because we're smart. We're yeah, good well, at this. Uh, so we yeah, want everybody I mean, else to be good at this. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make baseball fun and informative and, uh, you know, make sure that like, I think it also speaks to something we debate a lot on a lot of guys, but when yeah. Welsh and I are both on a player, I think it's always something you should notice. And I think you should take notice and be aggressive on those players. And some of these guys we are, and this guy we are both in on too, because I think he is being underappreciated. Yeah, and we're also the most humble, the most humble. Uh, well, Jose Miranda totally is the humble. player at number eight, who I've talked uh, just lit me at in the entire offseason. <laughs> I love the contact skills. I really, really think this is a middle-of-the-order type of bat, and if it progresses to that level, I would not be shocked if this team at some point was to run out of Jose Miranda, even at three, maybe at two, but a great, great two-strike hitter. There's 20-plus power in there, multi-position eligible, qualifies at third, which really stinks this year, and you can put him over at first. Um, You know, the league-winning thing is tough because you look at players like can they do everything for you he doesn't do everything for you but you're getting him post 150 and the impact of what he does at third base and just overall on the power numbers in a great offense in minnesota i think this is one of those guys that has easy potential to jump inside the top 100 and can be a league winner whether it is your corner uh any of your corner spots or you're putting over Mm -hmm. at third base so jose miranda number eight for me number eight for you joe is whom well, he's my fallback, by the way. Yesterday, you saw that at first base. If things don't go my way, I'll take Miranda, and I'll hopefully get 20-something home runs out of him and some decent counting stats. Uh, yeah. For me, number eight is Cattell Marte, second baseman slash outfield slash DH slash whatever for the Arizona Diamondbacks. And I think Marte is going to benefit from the team starting to get a little better around him and a little bit more athletic around him, too. The Diamondbacks kind of struggled the last few years to put a good team on the field, and I think – you know, they acquired Christian Walker a few years ago. That's been a good addition. You see Corbin Carroll and McCarthy coming up. This is a much more dynamic team in Arizona than we've seen in many, many years. So I think that looking at Cattell Marte, the surrounding pieces help. You know, sort of the, uh, what is it, the, all the uh, the the waves bring the boat to the shore. Some stupid thing. I'm asking the wrong guy. I was you a never Welshism. got a you, metaphor right. You in just your started life. to create your own Welshism because I don't All know where you're going. All tides raise the shore of the boats and the things with the. We sell I don't know. seashells by the seashore. Pretty much. But here's okay. the thing with Marte. Second base, also a tough position. I'm not chasing his peak season. I'm not thinking he's going to hit 30 bombs. I'm not thinking he's going to hit 320 or something like that. But can he give you a solid, productive season across the board in a bunch of categories? I think the answer is yes. And I think he's one of these players that people have been so in on in some years and been disappointed that the market right now, when you look at where he's being drafted at 194, the market's pretty much given up. And I think he's still too young of a player to give up on completely. I agree. And I think if you invest in him and he plays 150 games, I do think he can help win you a league because second base and middle infield, we talk about all the time. You know, shortstop's loaded, second base, not so much. Here's a fallback option if things don't go your way, and that is Cattell Marte. All right, let's go to number seven, a guy that you and I seem to be fighting over lately, and we both lost out yesterday on the draft show to John Legaza on J.D. Martinez. Yeah, what happened to you just there a second, by the way? You turned into, a, like, Philly. You got Philly in there. You're like, hey, I know. There. I know. You know what's happening? Hey there, My folks. voice is starting to go again. It's been a rough couple weeks of illness, sickness, I tired, know. time change. 
Now nobody cares. Nobody cares about my complaint. It just so it was just, one of those like Joe personalities. You do, like, and you, the you, what you want to do is you want to draft Cattell Marte and then get a hoagie <laughs> and watch him like hit him runs the whole time. Uh, you are right though. JD Martinez is a player that you and I have both been uh, trying to attack at all costs. It's something about the Dodgers and what they're able to do overall. He's also going to hit a prominent spot in the lineup. If you're going to be hitting behind like Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts. Give me that all day. It was a down year last year. He still hit 274, though. The power numbers kind of tanked a little bit. But again, Dodgers are a great hope for bounce back. The bat X has got him at 23 homers with a 269 batting average. And he is an afterthought because he's DH only for so many people. He goes at 191. If you get 25 homers, you're pro. I mean, what do the bat projections have? They've got 7480 on the run in RBIs. If you get close to 8585 with near 25 homers and a 270, 75 batting average that is going to smash smash the cost that you get him at so at 191 it's a no-brainer jd martinez all day long number seven all right next you. on my list is somebody that uh of course i've talked about ad nauseum and i'm just going to keep driving this home because i just think it's correct 170 actually moved to 169 this morning on the uh, nice. big board there you go uh andres munoz reliever for the seattle mariners like every video he's in every i tried to show. put him in mine here by the way and then i looked nah. over and i was like god joe's got nope. him on here like i, I tried him. to do it he's i was gonna mine. put him way higher though way higher than you i'm gonna tell everybody i was gonna put him at two on this well list mine are mine are based on the way i did my list was descending adp so gotcha. the further you're going, so I started out, and as we get closer to 100, I think these guys might be able to help you a little more because there is still a range of outcomes, as my friend Eric Brown likes to say, where, you know, Seawall just stays the closer. It could happen. Now, the foot issue, he had the foot surgery, Munoz. He's been throwing bullpens now. Uh, live batting practice uh, session was scheduled for Monday, so that was good. It's just a matter of ramp up now and how fast that can happen for him. And I do believe that when you're looking at the K percentage, which is just absurd, the 37%, when you look at what he did last year, the 249 ERA in 65 innings, the 0.89 whip, it's only a matter of time. Paul Seawald is a good reliever, but to me, you want a lockdown closer guy. I think Seawald is more of the matchup guy and Munoz is more of the flame throwing, get three outs and the game is over and you make it an eight inning game kind of guy. And I do think this is just something over time where he wins out and it could be sooner than later and don't worry about the ramp up see for ramp ups for relievers much easier than starting pitchers so it's not like he needs three weeks in order to get ready he really doesn't he needs a minimum amount of innings to go there and be useful for the mariners so that's why he is number seven on my list because there is still some downside good list so far next and i did it again so far what are we doing here what the hell is wrong with me today <laughs> I'm so tired, Welsh, oh, but I just man. keep doing shows anyway. It doesn't matter. No, I, love, I actually think we could do it. It's going to be like a drinking game. It would be like how many different voices come <laughs> so out of far, Joe. So yeah. far, what are we doing? All right, let's go to Ant I, This is the best name to say in that voice, too. Number six, Anthony Volpe. Yeah. He's a good so, prospect. I like him I a lot. I don't have a lot of prospects on this list. Jordan Walker would have, of course, made it. And there's so many of these guys that come at such big costs. But if you let's get back to like the the context of and the mm -hmm. idea of what this episode is, is it's league winners. So where do league winners usually come from? They come from deeper ADPs. Anthony yep. Volpe is the one prospect, not Colas, not Miguel Vargas, not any of that. He's the one prospect that really sits out here with a crazy low ADP because there's no guarantees, but the, the chatter is getting bigger and bigger and the articles are becoming more and more about Anthony Volpe needing to break teams. You're also seeing some big riders. I think Peter Gammons did this, which means you're getting you know, upper people in the organization pushing like for this. That Anthony, yeah. yeah, that Anthony Volpe should break with this team. And it's becoming a big piece of the conversation that, listen, if Anthony Volpe does break, he is a 2020 potential player instantly. The Bat X, that is low on prospects in under 60 games, has six homers, eight uh, stolen bases. You project that out and you just double it and that gets you only to 120 games. You're looking at a 14-16 season. If you get a full year, you're going to get to 2020 in that great ballpark. So it's riskier, but this is the furthest guy down the ADP list that is of all 20 players or technically 19 because we have one holdover at mm -hmm. 347 right now. The end of your drafts, maybe I think right now you snag Volpe. If he doesn't make the roster, you can cut him and move on, but you take him at the end because if he does break camp, this is a 2020 player and a player that people are going to dump fab on when he does actually make it. Anthony Volpe could be a league winner. 
I only want Anthony Volpe to break camp if he's going to play every day, which again, I just and that's the only way they would do it. I mean, he's got to be an everyday player then. And I don't know what that means then. Like, what do you do with like, do you move Glaber Torres to third? You don't want to do that necessarily. And like, you want that. Peraza, like you want Oswald Peraza, you want all these guys, you got Donaldson still floating around there. The one, I don't know. The one thing point, though with Volpe, I think you can still hold just for a tiny bit, because if you do think about like a uh, arbitration, like super two type of stuff that I think in the first month, especially if he just balls out at triple a, he's coming back up. So if you have the ability to hold, you can avoid right. being the guy that has to dump a top waiver wire spot or fab to get him. Because I don't think when may comes around, he's going to be in the minors anymore, regardless of what's going on, whether he breaks camp or not. So another thing to think about, and Michael Harris was able to be a league winner last year without mm -hmm. coming up at the start of the year. And Volpe can do the same thing. Yeah. He'd be a dark horse for rookie of the year for sure. If he got every yeah. day at bats by, oh, absolutely. In the by AL Memorial sure. day, even, even by then. And I, I keep telling everybody from what I watched him play in person, he reminds me of Pedroia, that same skill set. He's got a little bit stronger of a lower half. You know, like Pedroia wasn't a big workout guy. We all knew if Dustin Pedroia was a workout guy, he would have been Anthony Volpe. Like if he had taken a little bit more physical care of himself. Yeah. But that same sort of style of play, same kind of intensity, same sort of statistical setup too, where, you know, he's going to give you some, you know, 15 stone bases. He's going to give you more power than you realize. Volpe's a really special talent. There's no doubt about that. All right. Before we continue on with the list, just want to shout out Draft Assistant. If you haven't already, make sure you're using it because I know you got drafts coming out this week, next week, next weekend, right. all kinds of drafts, and there's still time left to use it. We have the most powerful tools, and they can sync right to your league's draft. It can recommend players to you, tell you who got picked where or what the people after you already have and why you shouldn't pick certain players because they're going to make it back to you. The insights are unbelievable, and it doesn't matter if you've been – you know, drafting a teams for years, or if you are somebody that's just drafting for the first time, the draft assistant with the sync technology can help you. So if you're an MVP or hall of fame subscriber, you can try it now at www.fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. <laughs> or of course you can go and just download the draft wizard app, which is the way to do it and just crush all your competition into little tiny pieces. Sign up for premium today. Fantasypros.com slash premium that gives you access to lots of other tools here on fantasy pros but most importantly that draft assistant for all of your drafts let's go on to the next guy on the list and for me guess what it's another reliever it's yon duran of the minnesota twins at 148 now this is another one of these electric guys where i'm just trying to look for you see he's about 30 spots higher than munoz in adp because i think people feel like you know, Ore Lopez is the closer sort of kind of. But this is another one of these guys that's just simply electric. 89 strikeouts last year, just 16 walks. The control is impeccable. He's practically unhittable. A .98 whip, a 186 ERA. I just think it's kind of funny that, you know, him and Munoz are floating around. And if you take both of those guys, you know they're going to give you peripherals. And I do think eventually they're going to give you saves too. Last year, he did have eight saves. So I think Durant's just a matter of time, uh, Welsh, before he takes over. So a lot of guys were talking about taking over spots here in the relief area, which brings us to our top five. And top five, who cracks number five for you, Welsh, on your list of league winners? Well, technically, it's another prospect, but not, unlike Volpe, Volpe was a guy that did not touch the majors. This guy did touch the majors, does still have that qualification. Miguel Vargas. Miguel Vargas has been someone I'm trying to swoop up in every way I can. He has an uh, ADP on Fantasy Pros of 242 leagues pending, of course. Sometimes he goes in in the top uh, 180 or so. He's going to be the second baseman for the Dodgers, which is going to give him, most likely by May, in all formats, first and second base eligibility. You might even have some outfield that are out there. Uh, he's a great patient hitter. And like you are very focused on the White Sox a lot in your kind of uh, in your I team am. here. I'm a Dodger guy. I've been breaking out a lot of the Dodgers players because I think there's undervalued guys. At 242, Miguel Vargas is like an absolute no-brainer for where he's going to get to play, the opportunity he's going to get, the type of patient hitter that he is. And, you know, even in projections, they might be a little bit low, but I think if you play a full season, the lowest you're going to see is a 15-10 season. And getting those extra stolen bases at second base is going to be awesome. It's a really thin position. If Miguel Vargas hits peak, you're going to be talking about probably like a 25-15 guy. And he's going to crack top 50 overall fantasy production with those Dodgers. So Miguel Vargas has the makings of being a league winner, especially based on his cost. 
Yeah, 242 is a pretty good cost. All right. Uh, and it's funny you mentioned that. I'm fading the Dodgers this year, especially at their cost. And I'm in on the Mariners and I'm in on the White Sox a lot. So those are the teams. You better I'm go on, make a White Sox team bet with how much uh, you've been pushing. What those makes White you think Sox? I haven't already? All um, right. Hello. Do you, I've already, believe me, and there's going to be a show on that next week. Matt Stryker and I over on Betting Pros. If you don't watch Betting Pros, you should. And it's the other, you know, family here. We have the MLB channel. We have Betting Pros. We have Fantasy Pros. Betting Pros YouTube. I got Matt Stryker, who is uh, from the Better's Eye. You know him if you're a WWE fan. He's also my co-host for the last four years at Sports Grid. We do a fantasy and wagering baseball show uh, every Sunday morning. He's going to come on. We're going to talk about some of our favorite bets going into the season. And I also have a Best Bets video out as well for MLB on betting pros. Hopefully so Corbin Carroll, uh, rookie of the year, 380, oh, which oh, I Oh, he made the is. top five, my friend. He right, made yeah, the top five. I made that five. one. I, I, I you locked know what? that I, in it. I think it was I've made a couple futures bets. I think I locked it in a plus 700, and I think after the extension, Ooh. it moved to five. It might even be lower now. So. Yeah, I got it like about four to one, but I've been making some future bets. Uh, and I, I'm not a big, big futures bet like on the season. I oh, you like know, that's my jam. That Ooh, is your jam, but I'm it. doing a few. Joey P loves the futures bets. Joey P mm-hmm. is pretty, pretty, pretty good on the futures <laughs> bets. All right, let's, and I want everybody out there to make money with me. So please go watch the video, check it out and go make some investments because everything that I'm talking about, I've invested in. So I'm not one of these people who says, oh yeah, go do this. No, no, no. I'm doing it with you together. We're a team here. All right, let's go to the next one here. Top five for me, Freddie Peralta. This is Boomer Bus. You know, Nick Pollock scared the crap out of me a couple weeks ago when we had him on. Him and Alex Fast are going to come on next week and debate some pitchers. But you know what? I've been watching this very carefully. Steve Gardner kind of put me at ease. We had him on about Freddie Peralta, some other people we've talked about Freddie Peralta with. I have to buy back in because the strikeout potential is just too big in those leagues where, you know, your head-to-head strikeout categories or head-to-head points and they're two points. I think Freddie Peralta is just one of those guys that if he is right and the shoulder is not an issue, you're looking at practically a number two fantasy starter and you're getting him at 143 overall. I mean, that's an absurd price. That's like a fifth starter practically. So I've got to take a chance on Freddie Peralta. Yes, there's enormous risk with the health. Yes, there's risk with the innings. I get all that. But the Milwaukee Brewers are kind of a weird team right now. I think a lot of people are looking at them and saying, oh, you know, they can't compete with the Cardinals. There's a little chaos going on. Corbin Burns is on his way out. I think it's that chaos I want to take advantage of because I kind of like the offseason they had. I like adding Winker. I like adding Contreras. I like what they've done here in the last couple of years, adding guys like Telez and Willie Adamas, who we love here on the show. This is a really good pitching staff if everybody's healthy. And Freddie Peralta, to me, is one of those guys. It is boomer bust. But I will take a shot on Freddie Peralta at 143 for sure. Let's go top four for you. I've got zero shares of this next guy, Welsh, but everybody we have on the show wants to talk about him and everybody seems to be right. And I guess I'm wrong. It's Taylor Ward. Taylor Ward, one of those guys that, like you said, every single person wants, but he's outside the top 100 right now. A uh, low True. strikeout rate, which you like. Good batting average at 281 last year. Projections, at least in the 260s, 23 and 5 last year. Projections have him beating those numbers. Double digit walk percentages. And if I'm telling you 25, 10, 25, 15 puts you in a spot where you're going to be a top 50 or 75 overall player, Taylor Ward is that. He's the highest on my list of any of the players I pick, but it's 122. ADP right now he can float a little bit higher if all things work out this is that sandwich hitter between like Mike Trout and Otani I'm not saying he'll physically hit between them but if he's hitting right after them the opportunities are going to be immense immense for Taylor Ward this year and uh, if he can if he can stay healthy and we can get maybe more than 135 games we can play that full season I'm optimistic you're going to at minimum get a 25-10 season and though it may not be the biggest league league winning it at a position that's a little bit questionable in outfield, it really has the potential to be like a solid outfielder two coming up. And, you know, like I said, break maybe that top 75 overall. So Taylor Ward making the list. Get ready for my White Sox run, Welsh. Because yeah, here I know. it comes. This is what I'm ready. Number four, Lucas Giolito. We've talked about him so much on the podcast, so I'm not going to belabor it too much, but he's going at 140. 140. That's nuts, okay? For a guy who's had multiple 200-inning seasons, for a guy who's had multiple seasons of three-and-a-half ERAs or lower in the American League, come on, man. Like, it just it was bad last year. He was overweight. The mechanics got off. Just crumple it up, throw it out the window. Let's never talk about it again, and let's just move on because leaving Lucas Giolito to the 140s is absurd. If you're like me and you want to hit hitting early in your drafts, this is the perfect guy, along with guys like Peralta and some of the guys that Welsh is going to mention next. 
to go ahead and load up your rotation with these guys because they've been there and done that. They've pitched like aces. It was just a year ago this time where Lucas Giolito was looked at in fantasy as basically like he's a 1A starter. Like he's not quite elite maybe, but he's right at that uh, that room where we want to put him in that conversation. Now one bad season, he's not. I'm not buying it, but I am buying him in drafts. Lucas Giolito, 140. Number three for you. Ooh, Welsh, top three. We're getting sexy here. And this is the Welsh guy, well, I feel like, of the offseason. You said, by the way, if anyone wants to check out on my Instagram, I took a picture with Lucas Giolito the other day. And uh, I, saw I will him. I will make him He's look huge. even skinnier. He is right? huge, man. He makes me feel you're short. A, you're a tall guy. We've hung out. I'm short. You're tall. But he and is taller than you. So that's really I something. I was like, I'm like, hey, Lucas. Mr. And also, Giolito, he lost all I that weight. Well, and he looked, and he also like, you know, he lost a bunch of weight and then standing next to me, it'll look like he lost like 80 pounds. It's incredible. But um, where this is your White Sox run, this is the Welsh run. So uh -huh. I don't need to go crazy about this. Number three, Jeffrey Springs. You should know that was coming. Jeffrey Springs with the change, throwing more changeups this past year, strikeout numbers in the same equivalent range of like you Darvish. Effect uh, effectiveness was in the same general range as like Zach Gallen. He had a really low ERA. He had an XFIP Sierra that was also in the low threes. Um, he's getting just a bunch of movement on pitches and he's going to be uh, this year. There's been a little bit of an uptick. I think we saw, and I saw a couple of people talking maybe about it was like the slider or something that was getting more movement, which is just absurd. And he's going to be in this full frontline starter. I am all about Jeffrey Springs. I think he's one of the biggest smashing deals. 185 is crazy. Also in many spots can be a spark for you, a starting pitcher as relief pitcher. Jeffrey Springs has to be on all my teams. And when he's not, I get grouchy about it. Like what happened in the mock draft that Joe and I did where he swooped in Jeffrey Springs, no doubt league winner for me at number three. All right. Another white Sox. The second one here on my list, Andrew Vaughn, first base outfielder. I have done multiple videos, multiple podcasts. I've talked about Andrew Vaughn. Okay. Uh, Andrew Vaughn coming out of college was a can't miss bat. I mean, the guy just absolutely crushed NCAA. Like he had like an OPS of 1100. You think he had 400 one year. It's nuts. Like this guy is a pure hitter. They asked him to play the outfield. They asked him to DH. Converting to DH is not easy. It is not a day off, okay? It's really hard, especially for young players, to make that transition to just hitting four times a game and staying loose and all that. So they really put him through the ringer, and they never put him through the minor leagues. He had like 50 games in the minor leagues, and I was like, okay, let's bring you up here because they're a very aggressive organization. Some of the projections on Andrew Vaughn I think are really light. Like ATC has about 21 home runs and 75 ribbies. I think that's really light. But if you look at Zips, they've got him for 28 homers, 82 RBI. If you can get that at a player 134, we talk about first base being light and the corner spots being light. Andrew Vaughn has position eligibility. Andrew Vaughn does have 30 home run upside. Yeah, I said it. 30 home run upside if everything breaks right. And I think getting back to his natural position of first base mentally just puts him at ease. And I think as long as he hits in that five or six spot in the batting order, things are going to go really well for Andrew Vaughn because I think people just lose patience with players and they don't give him enough credit for learning on the job. And that's what he's been doing for two years. And he hasn't failed. He just hasn't blown the doors off because he's still a very young player. So I think it was asking a lot of him to develop at the major league level against top tier pitching. It's asking a lot of any prospect and the White Sox, I think asked too much of Andrew Vaughn. Not everybody comes in and is Julio Rodriguez. So Andrew Vaughn this year, guess what? It's breakout time. Time for number uh, two on your list here. Welsh, who is it? Shh. Lars Newpar. Of course, it's no, Lars Newpar. Not Lars Newpar. It, I almost, not I'm, the I'm Lars almost, new bar. I got to tell you, like, <laughs> we got to stop doing these type of lists because it's like, I just have to bring him up in every aspect. You know, the qualifications I gotta on get this one are, share because I got zero shares of new. You should. I gotta get one this year you should. just for you. When you talk about, it just so happens that two of my favorite players this year have post 180, 100 AP. So they fall into so many of these categories of like breakout and sleeper, and they're going to fall into this. And league winners, this is the type of guy. And Lars Newbar, you guys know, I, you know, he's worked so hard in the last two years on the hard hit with driveline two straight years. Last year, it was about really barreling and hitting, or I'm sorry, hitting it hard, 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 hard. This year, it's about barreling those hard hits he talked about with uh, Enosaurus a couple weeks ago. I just believe all the changes that he has made is going to be fruitful. Expected uh, batting average higher uh, last year. I think, um, and projections have him around hitting 240. They're not crazy optimistic statistically, roughly on a full season, 
2010 from the bat X. I think he could push 30. I think he could steal a little bit more. And I think he could lead off for the Cardinals. Lars Newtbar is a no brainer. It's a 185 ADP incredible since March 1st on NFBC drafts. He has never gone inside the top 160. I have him in the 130s. I'm all about Lars Newtbar. I think he's a league winner at again, that position that stinks. Taylor Ward, mm-hmm. Lars Newtbar will be on a lot of my teams as hopefully my outfielder 3-4. They might even be 2-3, pending the type of format. Lars Newbar, number two, no shock. Some of the minor league numbers on him just hold me back a little bit. But again, maybe he's made that jump. Like, it, it happens sometimes. You know, sometimes players, they're, you know, up and down the minor leagues, and then they just, something clicks or something fixed in their swing, and they make that jump. Maybe that's what Newbar had, but I just want to a little bit more. Two straight it years of driveline, it, it helps. It does. It does. Uh, number two for me, I mentioned it before, Lance Lynn. So there's my run of White Sox. There you go. So Giolito, Vaughn, and Lance Lynn, he's number two. He's going at 129. All the reasons that Welsh already mentioned, so I won't belabor it. But once again, a player that has proven himself, and he proved it last year over his last 14 starts with a two and a half ERA. I don't care if his ERA was seven when he came back from the injury. I don't care. That was six starts. You look at the body of work, and it's a big body when you're looking at the body of Lance Lynn. It's good enough. It's good enough for me to invest in. And if you gave me a think about this, like if you went early hitting, right. And you ended up with a pitching staff that let's say had Alec Manoa, then Giolito and Lance Lynn. I guarantee you that dog will hunt. I guarantee you, you will be competitive in that league. Uh, You'll also be competitive in the craft service table too, because those are some big boys that uh, are going to, well, not Giolito anymore. All salads for Giolito. All salads. He's gone keto. He's gone completely different now, but seriously, Lance Lynn, this guy's a stud, okay? And and the White Sox have a chance here, I think, in this turnover they've had last season at the manager spot too. I think you might get a different feel from this White Sox team, and I think they're very dangerous if healthy, especially with Jimenez and Robert healthy. My goodness, those are two really special talents, and I think the offense is going to be there potentially for Lance Lynn and Giolito too, which brings us to our number ones, Welsh, one of our favorite things. This is like Oprah's favorite things list, I feel like. So mm-hmm. go ahead. Hit him with number one, top player outside of the 100 who could be a league winner. You get an ace. You get an ace. And you get an ace when you take Reed Detmers outside the top 200. Reed Detmers this spring has shown an increased velo on his slider, low 80s into the mid 80s, pushing 88. We are almost in a power slider, my friends. Last year, fastball sitting in that low uh, 90s, high 80s. This year, it's been sitting mid 90s, pumping even 96, 97. Those are incredible changes. Last year, uh, he got sent down for a bit, comes back up. July had a one ERA. June had an under three ERA. This spring, with the command, he's definitely a command pumping type of pitcher. With those velo increases, it is a huge boon. And when you're talking about a pitcher outside the top 200, on a big, powerful offensive team, what they've been lacking, you might walk into extra wins. If those velo, if the velo numbers with that command Mm -hmm. end up working out, you could be pushing a very low three, three ERA. I think Reed Detmers could push top 15 SP this year. And if that happens post 200, he is the epitome of league winners right here. This is, this is the Kyle Wright last year where Kyle Wright was Mm. almost undrafted and pushes up. Reed Detmers has the potential to be the Kyle Wright this year. So he's my number one league winner. I like that. I like that a lot. And Detmers is a big target of mine. My number one guy might surprise some people. Number 127, Nick Castellanos. That's right. He's going outside the top 100 last year. He was going well within the top 75, Nick Castellanos, because he was coming off a monster season. He had a lot of hype because, you know, he's a free agent coming off a 34, uh, 95, 100 season. That's a pretty good season last time I checked. And things didn't go well. Year one of a big contract. Oh, what a surprise. Let's just dial it back a little bit. Let's go back in the wayback machine. Let's look at some of the slugging percentages for him, okay? In 2021, 576. In 2020, 486. And in 2019, 529. In 2018, 500. In 2017, 490. In 2016, 496. You see where I'm going with this, folks? You see where I'm going? Let's not hyperventilate about a down season. It happens sometimes. Philadelphia is a very home run friendly environment. It's a very good offense. Bryce Harper is out of this lineup. That's going to move Castellanos up into the probably the five spot. That's where he seems to be projected right now. And as my voice tends to go, maybe this was the whole thing all along. My brain just wanted to go to Philadelphia for this I number one so. spot. 
the entire time. Who knows that when my voice goes, I become a resident of South Philadelphia. But these things happen. I will say this about Castellanos. You're looking for a player, an outfield spot where we're looking for outfielders all the time at 127. He has a chance to get back to 30 home runs. He has a chance to get back to 85, 85 sort of potential here. And he's a player that historically, in terms of batting average, has always been pretty solid. So Nick Castellanos has been a good hitter since his days in Detroit. I am not worried at all. He's had some down moments before in his career and bounced back. In fact, if you look at 2020, which I know was the COVID year, his batting average is at 225. The next year he came back at 309. So let's not panic about Nick Castellanos. He is just a year and change removed from a dramatically good season. In fact, the best of his career. Let's just chalk it up to the first year in a new city with a big contract and a lot of expectations. But Castellanos, I think, is going to be just fine. Let's recap the names. The top 10 for me, Kodai Senga, Jordan Walker, Cattell Marte, Andres Munoz, Yohan Duran, Freddie Peralta, Lucas Giolito, Andrew Vaughn, Lance Lynn, and Nick Castellanos for Welsh. Alberto Mundesi, Mondesi. Lance Lynn, Jose Miranda, J.D. Martinez, Anthony Volpe, Miguel Vargas, Taylor Ward, Jeffrey Springs, the Newt Bar, and of course, Reed Detmers. And I want to know from all of you out there watching and listening to the show, if you're watching on YouTube, who are your league winners? Drop the names. Teach us a thing or two in the comments Good. below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Fantasy Pros MLB Fantasy Baseball Fest Coming up next Wednesday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Again, that's the 22nd of March. So don't worry about like checking your date calendar things and your phone, all that stuff. Just subscribe and you'll know as soon, boom, you get a little notification when you click that little bell till it goes ding. So you know what's going on. So go check that out. Join us live. If you can't join us live, watch it back. It's going to be fun. Some of the best minds of fantasy baseball getting you ready for your final drafts and getting you pumped for the season. Welsh is pumped. I'm pumped. Go check out Fantasy Pros Premium to fantasypros.com slash premium and you go up. use. That's right. Go use that draft assistant with sync. It's going to just change your world, make all your drafts better, easier. That's what we're here for, to make your lives better. Welsh, it's a pleasure as always. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For Welsh, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids. <laughs>